Hello teens! Welcome to this Saint Nation. I'm Pastor Jadel and this is Wisdom Wednesday. So wise teens, let us all worship the Lord. Jesus, we came to my rescue. I'm Keisha. And I'm Vito. And this is Verse of the Week. Our challenge for today will be the Recap Challenge. Now you may be wondering what the Recap Challenge is. Well, it's a recap from our past challenges. If you're ready, let's begin. Now this is the Recap Challenge. Number one, have you taken challenge number one by posting the verse on your Facebook timeline? Number two, have you already posted your takeaway learnings about Matthew 28 verse 19 from our compasses today? 
If not, then I challenge you to take challenge number one and number two today. So here again is our verse. Matthew 28 verse 19. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. This will conclude our verse of the week. Always remember, you, you are, are destined for Christ. Hi teens, this is Pastor Yam. Hi, I'm Mark. And Abby, welcome to Wisdom Wednesday Blueprint. Most of us are involved in a ministry which aims to serve God and His people. It is such a rewarding feeling to serve our Father, as it says in 1 Timothy 4 verse 12. Let no one despise you for your youth, but set the believers an example in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, in purity. It is important to devote time in serving our Lord, especially us teens. That's correct! So here are three advantages of serving God. Number one, he will repay your hard work. Serving God and helping in church takes commitment and dedication. And through this hard work, God will grant you blessings and take care of you. As it says in Matthew 6 verse 33, But seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Exactly! Serving God is one of the ways to devote yourself to God. Lay all your worries on Him as you serve Him, and He will take care of you. Second is, you're doing a great mission to see more soul saints. By serving in the ministries allows the church to serve and reach more people and help them bring closer to God. Matthew 28, 19-20 Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And I behold, I am with you always at the end of the age. By being involved in serving God, you are helping more people get saved. You are not only bringing yourself closer to God, but also others. And finally, we can meet Godly friends. In church, you do not serve by yourself. You are also joined to God-oriented people who are there to also devote themselves and time to the Lord. As it says in Proverbs 13 verse 20, Whoever walks with the wise becomes wise, but the companion of fool will suffer harm. Teens, serving your God can not only help you but also other people who need to know Jesus. Working with God and for God can truly help you build a stronger relationship with Him. It is a great opportunity to bring your soul, mind, and body to Him. Thank you so much, teens, for those tips. Hope you liked it and enjoyed it. See you again here in Blueprint. You are destined for Christ. Hello, hello to you, teens. Welcome back to Teens in Tune. I am Pastora Cristel. And once again, we have another song featured for you that is definitely Bible-based and the singers are solid Christians. For today's episode, that is the song Be The Sound by Carrington Gates. Carrington Gaines is a native of Buffalo, New York, and currently is the Worship and Arts Director of the Global Impact Christian Ministries in Georgia. He and his wife is currently based at Atlanta. Gaines released his debut album entitled The Process in December 2015, and this tells the story of Gaines' personal road to salvation. Wow! While also writing songs that will penetrate the hearts of believers, he wants to bridge the gap between cultures and denominations in the body of Christ and lead them to a place where they have personal encounters with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The song, Be the Sound, encourages the listeners to speak more about Jesus, to be a light that shines the truth about Him. Be the sound of someone's salvation. Amen. Acts 4 verse 20 says, for we cannot but speak of what we have seen and heard. Let us listen to this song. I want to be the sound. 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 I hope 
we like our song feature for today that is Be the Sound by Carrington Gaines. You know what, teens, be the sound of God's goodness towards others' lives. I hope you like our song feature for today. That is Be the Sound by Carrington Gaines. You know what, teens, may I encourage you to be the sound of God's goodness towards other people's lives so that they themselves will get to know Him who saves. Amen. So that's it for our episode for the day of Teens in Tune. You can check it out, our song feature for today in our destination, Teens in Tune. And always remember, it is important that we choose the songs that we listen to. Let God's word always be our standard in everything. You are destined for Christ. God bless you. Hi, teens. I'm Pastor Jodel and this is Compass. Today is Wisdom Wednesday, and we're talking about wisdom from the Word of God. So, we have to understand that it's one thing to be smart, but also another thing to be wise. Being wise means more than just having knowledge, but it's actually learning how to apply this knowledge into our everyday lives, and that is wisdom. And there are many sources of wisdom in which today we are going to talk about. In James chapter 3, verse 17, it says here, But the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure, then peaceable, gentle, open to reason, full of mercy and good fruits, impartial and sincere. While in the New Living Translation, it says here, But the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure. It is also peace-loving, gentle at all times, and willing to yield to others. It is full of mercy and good deeds. It shows no partiality and is always sincere. And so, teens, did you know that there are many sources of wisdom? Yes, the world is a source of wisdom. It says in James chapter 3, verse 15, This is not the wisdom that comes down from above, but is earthly, unspiritual, or demonic. Well, since Satan is the prince of this world, then this world derives its wisdom from the enemy who is Satan. We can expect this world's wisdom to be highly influenced by him. The world's wisdom is also applicable to only the earthly things. And God's wisdom is far more superior than the wisdom of this world. Also, as we have mentioned, Satan is a source of wisdom. Ezekiel 28, verse 12. Son of man, raise a lamentation over the king of Tyre, and say to him, Thus says the Lord God, You were the signet of perfection, full of wisdom, and perfect in beauty. Now, as we can see, the enemy, Satan, is full of wisdom. That is the description of him in the book of Ezekiel. Also, we must understand that Satan is a created being. And so he is not the main source of wisdom, but it was mentioned that he is full of it. But the thing is, when he fell, it became corrupted wisdom. And since the world is deriving its wisdom, which is mostly influenced by him, then we can expect that Satan and this world have something in common when it comes to the wisdom that they want to communicate to the people. And of course, we know that God is a source of wisdom. James chapter 1, verse 5, If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God, who gives generously to all without reproach, and it will be given to him. Now we know that God is a source of wisdom, and his wisdom is unlimited. He gives it to everyone without finding fault, and surely it is given generously to all of us. So if you're going to choose which wisdom do we like, of course, the godly wisdom. James chapter 3, beginning with verse 15 to 16, it says here, This is not the wisdom that comes down from above, but is earthly, unspiritual, demonic, for where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there will be this disorder and every vile practice. And so we know that from this verse, Godly wisdom is not envious. Godly wisdom is not out of selfish ambition. We know that godly wisdom is, first of all, the Bible says, pure, 
it means it is free from anything that mixes it and makes it impure. It is free from any impurities. We know that wisdom from God is second, peace-loving, which means it promotes peace and not misunderstanding. Thirdly, we know that the wisdom that comes from above is gentle. The Greek word that was used means gentle, patient, equitable, and considerate. Number four, it is open to reason, meaning to say it is submissive and compliant. This means you are willing to learn and to listen to other people. Number five, it is full of mercy. The kind of wisdom that God gives does not take revenge. It is joined with a desire for good to other people. And also, we must remember that God is full of mercy. Number six, it is full of good fruits. It produces good fruit in people's lives. Luke 7 verse 35, but wisdom is proven to be right by what results from it. Number seven, it is impartial. It does not take sides and also it does not make partial judgments. Lastly, it is sincere. Wisdom that comes from above is genuine. And so teens, we must remember that in this world, we have lots of sources of wisdom. But we must choose the godly wisdom, which has all of these characteristics present in our study for today. So I hope that you will find wisdom in Christ. Now let me pray for you. Heavenly Father, I come to you in Jesus' name and I lift the teens to you. Lord, help us to gain wisdom from the word, wisdom from you, and wisdom not of this world, God, and not from Satan, but God, the wisdom that will produce good fruit in our lives. We thank you for letting us understand, God, the characteristics of godly wisdom and help us to choose it at all times. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Thank you so much, teens, for being here with us at Destination. We'll see you again tomorrow, 5 o'clock.